Greetings and happy holidays, everybody. My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for another episode of our 12 Sprues of Kidness. Today, we are moving on to day number four. So let's go ahead and grab that box and see what we have in store for us today. Now, so far, this has been going very well. I had a lot of fun with my last build. That P40 Tomahawk Mark II was awesome. So I don't know what's going to be in this one, but let's go ahead and punch on through this and find out. So far, I've really enjoyed all the models. So let's hope that this one is just as enjoyable. All right, fish around. Here is the label. Let's go ahead and pull that on out. All right, and let's see what we have. It's the Academy JU87 Stuka. Awesome. That's cool. Let's go ahead and grab the kit and check it out. So this will be my very first newer boxing of Academy in 172nd scale. So this should be interesting to see how this goes together. If this one is decent, then the other two might also be pretty decent. So far, I am loving the look of this plastic though. Very, very finely recessed panel lines. Everything looks great. Nice detail there. Let's check the inside of the canopy and cockpit. Yeah, fuselage also finely recessed panel lines. It looks like there's a fair amount of detail on the inside. Oh, they also give us a multi-part canopy. That's pretty awesome. I have so far not really come across that in any of the kits that I built so far. So this is good. This is a step in the right direction. Thank you, Academy, for that. I really do appreciate the open cockpit. Let's go ahead and pull out the decals as well. It looks like the decal sheet is pretty small. There's not a lot of decals here for this particular aircraft. And also, I noticed there's no swastika here for the rear tail. That's fine. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't need for accuracy purposes or anything. So these are going to be fine. I'm going to build these out of the box and call it a day. Now, the instructions look to be a lot more detailed than our last Academy kit. That was the F4F Wildcat. And honestly, this is awesome. It has a nice detailed paint map here for all the different interesting at camo patterns and the decals. This is one of those splintered camo patterns that the Germans loved to use through most of the war. So that's going to be interesting to see if I can master that. I think I have the correct colors. I'm going to sort through my paints and figure out what I need. I might have to go pick up some from the hobby store, make a quick run or something like that. I think we have everything we need to go ahead and get this thing looking the part. Definitely need some RLM 70, 71, and 66 for sure. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our very first time lapse. I want to go ahead and start the basic building and painting of the cockpit. I'm going to use RLM 66 for all the interiors as the instructions call out and then we're going to go ahead and start gluing things together. I do want to also add some seat belts because if I can pose this canopy open it'd be nice to see some action in there and I think seat belts should be pretty simple. I'll just use some Tamiya tape and give them a light dusting of paint. Shouldn't be all that difficult. So let's go ahead and dive into that time lapse guys. We're going to start building up this really cool looking kit. See how it fits. I have really high hopes out of the box. It looks fantastic. Great moldings on the guns. Great molding on everything. Let's go ahead and get this started. See what we can do.
All right, everybody, we are moving right along, and this Stuka is absolutely just coming together like gangbusters. I got to tell you, this is a great little kit, but I have run across one issue. Now, the canopy I decided to use was the multi-part canopy. I had intentions to open up the back and open up the front. The problem with the canopy is, is the center section is too thick, and the sliding part of the canopy is also too thick. So strangely enough, they give you a multi-part canopy, and you can't fit the canopy in the open position because the parts just don't fit. So that is unfortunate. Also, there's a very top part that would slide around the antenna that comes up out of the top of the canopy. That's also sealed, so you have to open that up as well, and it's just too much hassle. We're going to go ahead and move on now to more construction. We have to build up the guns. We threw the legs on there, and despite the canopy, everything else has been beautiful, and it has a lot of really nice detail as well. Just a little bit of our Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, glue those guns together, and then we'll have those set, and we can put them aside and move on from there. Now, all right, everybody, we went ahead and off camera, overshot the top of the canopy with that RLM 66. So now we can go ahead and start priming and getting this thing ready for painting. I'm going to use the Stalner Res White Primer as I did before. That turned out really well in the last kit I did. So we're going to go ahead and keep using that primer. Then we're going to start painting up everything with a mixture of RLM 70 and RLM 71, both by Vallejo. We're also going to need to paint on some of those markings as well, like the yellow V and the yellow band around the tail. So let's go ahead and jump in here, get this thing rocking. Let's see how these colors turn out. Thank you. 
And we are back. Our Stuka is all nicely painted and gloss coated. So we are looking perfect for decal application. I went ahead and I used the aqueous acrylic RLM 65 for the bottom of the aircraft. And then I used Vallejo RLM 70 and 71 for the very top of the aircraft. So let's go ahead and just cut out all the rest of the decals though. We have some really great looking stencils. We'll be going ahead and using our exact same technique, you know, micro set, micro a little bit of warm water for the decal. Now that we have all of our decals nicely separated, we are ready for application. Let's go ahead and grab our micro saw and our micro set brushes. We're going to go ahead and get some tweezers, get our X-Acto knife, get everything we need, get some Q-tips for blotting up excess liquid, and we will go ahead and get this thing decaled and then gloss coated. So let's go ahead and get right back into that time lapse. Push forward. All right, everybody, we are back. And as you can see, we have a fully decaled and gloss coated JU87G2 looking actually really, really nice, guys. I love how this has turned out so far. The future always works well for a really smooth, nice, glossy finish. So I'm happy with it. Now, weathering is going to be difficult. I'm actually thinking about using some of these panel liners by AK. I know Joe raves about them, so I thought I might try them out. We've got the one for the green and brown camo for the top. And of course, we have one for white and blue for the bottom. So I think that's going to be all right. We'll give those a try. If that fails, we do have some panel line accent by Tim. Mia, though I do want to try the AK stuff and see how it works. We'll go ahead and also do a little bit of powder work, a little bit of oil work. I do have some colored pencils I can use as well. So we're just going to have some fun with this, see what we can do. And fingers crossed, we'll be back with a finished J87 G2 Stuka. Let's keep on keeping on.
And here it is, the finished 172nd scale Academy Stuka JU87 G2. Man, this was such a fun kit, guys. I didn't really have any trouble with overall fit. The kit just almost fell together. Great detail for a smaller scale kit like this. Just an overall very pleasant build. I did add an aerial. I also included a few inflators on there as well. Not really sure if that's accurate, but threw some on the end and the beginning of that easy line. We got our landing light installed in there, and we did some streaking here for some oil and for some grime coming off that front chin oil cooler. And honestly, yeah, you know, weathering for me is kind of a hit or miss, but I think I pulled this one off. It looks good enough at three feet. It's going to look great in my display case, so I'm happy with it. Now, the only complaints I have with the kit are really about the canopy. Now I use the multi-section canopy. They also give you a one-piece canopy like this right here, and I should have just used that. Honestly, they don't fit in the open position. The rear one could be opened, but the front one cannot. It would sit way too high and I'd have to flex it and bend it in order to get it down around where it should be. So we're not going to worry about that. That's the really only complaint that I have with the kit. Now I did use a little bit of colored pencil around different areas on the model. And there's some really nice surface detail with this. So I think that actually adds a lot of interest to the model. I also used some AIM weathering powder, both grimy black and dark gray. That worked out beautifully. And I have to say, I really do enjoy these AK panel liners. So thanks again, Joe, for the recommendation and for getting me a set of these. These are awesome. Now I did end up painting on that yellow V as well as the yellow band around the fuselage. I just wanted everything to match and I figured if I would have decals and then one band and then the yellow on the wingtips, it might be a little bit different. So I decided just to paint everything yellow. The V is a little crooked I think in certain angles, but for the most part, I think it looks okay. I'm happy with it. That front nose spinner though, that was a bear to get that decal on. But this was such a fun build guys. I have to say if you are interested in a Stuka, you're like 172nd scale, this is a pretty decent little model. Not that expensive, a lot of detail for the price. Academy is definitely winning some points. That's going to go ahead and do it for day number four, guys. This was a really, really fun model. I had a blast building it, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching the whole model come together. Despite the issue with the canopy, I would definitely recommend this kit to anyone who likes smaller scale 172nd. Everything else fit beautifully, and the detail level is definitely on point. So until our next episode, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool, and we'll see you back here for day number five for the 12 sprues of Kidness. Take it easy, and happy holidays. We'll see you soon. Thank you.